We're on Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland University where this afternoon the Lakeland Muskies will take on conference rival Concordia of Wisconsin, the Falcons. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. Uh, Chris, it's a windy, cold day today that'll definitely have an impact on the play calling. Uh, what do you got to say about that? Well, it's not November, but it's October, but it sure feels like November. Yeah, I think it's uh, such a big thing. The, the wind's coming just horribly, as you can see, out of the south. So who's ever got the wind, you're going to probably put the ball up in the air going that way. The other way, you're going to want to run the football. And this isn't your brother's um, musky team anymore because they don't throw the ball around the park anymore. They run the ball, which is probably a big, big advantage for them because of the weather, I think, just as you mentioned. Lakeland comes in with a 1-3 and three record. They lost their first conference game last week. Concordia comes in 2-2. Two and two. They lost their first game. These teams cannot afford to uh, lose any more conference games. Yeah, as I was doing my homework yesterday, I was thinking the same thing. It was one of those deals where you cannot not, uh, uh, basically know what you don't want to have to fall two games behind in the conference standings. And when they both teams last, last week lost a tough game, and so, you know, you don't want that to turn in out to be that second loss. One team, Concordia, lost in overtime, and Lakeland made a nice run at the end, but then fell a little short. Lakeland has a dynamic rusher in Larry Rivers, number two, and uh, he's on the cusp of gaining, I think it is, 2,000 yards in his third year, and uh, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with for Concordia. Yeah, he is. He's, he's third in the uh, Division Three in rushing with 148 yards a game, over your heart. and then he is the also uh, going to be the eighth. Uh, the Lakeland man to get over 2,000 yards. He just needs 25 Lakeland yards, University so we probably should choir. see that hopefully in the first quarter. We're gonna take All right. A here, yeah, we're going to take a minute for the national anthem. Hey, and when I was looking at the stats, Concordia's got dynamic defense uh, against the rusher, averaging less than 100 yards a game. That uh, could play heavily into the game. And then talking to Dennis Semp before the game, he said one thing that Lakeland has had trouble with is their defense. So Concordia may have a field day rushing the ball. Yeah, that's something that, well, see what goes on in the trenches. I think that's a great comment that you made right there. Concordia seems to stop the run, and that's what Lakeland, Ladies for this year, they've rushed it for 180 the times in four games. That's something they're going to want to do. So whoever wins the trenches beats, you know, is, is the guys that up front are going to be the ones maybe that wins this game in the, in the Archie's Bowl. Well, Chartez Noonery is the uh, starting quarterback. He missed the Wednesday, first game due to Wednesday injury, but he's been uh, on the field the last three games. His throwing is going to have an impact on today's game if they can't get the rushing game going. Yeah, and we'll see, like we said before, with the wind. I was just thinking again, too, as, as we're sitting here for the National Anthem. This is the first game where kids are going to be trying to catch a ball with some cold hands. Now, they do wear gloves and things like that, but, you know, even gripping the ball and throwing the ball, it's, they haven't practiced in this stuff. They haven't thrown in this stuff. It's going to be, you know, it's a little different like in November when you're kind of used to this. We'll see if they can throw the, throw the ball around. All right, with that, we're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the opening kickoff for today's game. Good afternoon, captains.
most party fouls are pretty dumb. But if you decide to drink and drive underage, you could lose your license and your freedom. Underage drinking and driving, the ultimate party foul. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore, and frustration a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought and unconventional methods common. I'm a teacher. I make more. talk about how with technology you can make amazing worlds. Come with me. My team and I bring the Halo world to life. Is that you? That is me. I wasn't a math genius and I knew nothing about coding. But you guys do. You guys have the power to change things. I want your job. I want you to have my job. When you have arthritis, it can be a painful reminder of all the things you can't do. Let's get a grip on arthritis. You can help by donating at arthritis.org. We missed the kickoff, but uh, Lakeland uh, Andrew Colley kicked it to about the three yard line. It kicked into the end zone and uh, Con Concordia will have it on the 25 yard line. Concordia James Lynn is the quarterback for uh, Concordia, number just gonna, 11. I was just gonna say, Marty, Concordia starts into the wind, so they're gonna try to run and they do a little jet sweep and nowhere there for Marty. Nothing going on that run. Uh, on the carry was uh, number 82. Nick Ruiz, Ruiz is a 5'8", 170-pound River Grove, Illinois graduate. Right back on the ball are the Falcons. Spread offense, two wide receivers left, two right, one running, running back. Fake handoff and a fumble, and Lakeland recovers. Inside the 20 yard line, making the recovery was McNemon Vincent. Well, we mentioned the weather's gonna be a factor and it's the first time that, you know, these kids are exchanging things and, you know, it's, it's cold. You yeah, know, you mentioned it, it in the beginning. You're right. We got Austin Watts at left tackle, number 76. Number 62 is Steve Ragan at left guard. Jonah Carlson at center. Deodre Fisher at right guard and Kendall Davis. And Rivers On the handoff, Rivers drives inside the uh, 10 yard line to about the six. First down, Muskies. I got 12 yard gain there, Marty. It was good blocking up front. Another handoff. Rivers was gonna take it off the right side but uh, went back to the left and found some running room but gets tackled just short of the uh, end zone. It's gonna be second and goal at the one. I was a little surprised he didn't get there, Marty. Oh, not much blocking there. 
Rivers gets hit for a loss. Good penetration there. They pulled a lineman on the left side, heading off to the right, but there was so much penetration they couldn't use that block. Quick out and getting into the end zone for Lakeland was Desmond Eddy. Touchdown Muskies. Eddy with his fourth touchdown on the year. Senior. We've seen him since he was a freshman and he gets the first score. Eddie has been uh, the leading receiver. He has 22 catches, 23 now. Good snap and placement. The kick by Collie is up and good. No good? Oh my. Got it. Offside. Reasonable. Offside on the Falcons. Lakeland will get another shot at it. Get a good snap. And a good placement, Colley just missed the kick, but he's gonna get a second chance. Colley all the way from Alabama, maybe doesn't like the cold this early in October, <laughs> Marty. Neither do you and me. <laughs> Lines are set. That time it went through. Now it's seven to nothing, Lakeland, with 13-17 left in the first quarter. Some chores you dread. You do them, but that doesn't mean you're happy about it. Then there's registering with the Selective Service. If you're a young man turning 18, the law says you have to register. It'll keep you eligible for college loans, government jobs, and training, and it only takes two minutes, which makes it not only your most important chore, but the easiest. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov or the local post office. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful when Mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. I wanted a better relationship with Dad, so I asked Mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Al Back at Taylor Field on uh, the campus of Lakeland University, Collie's kick again is very deep. This time it lands in the end zone and bounces through. Falcons will have it on the 25. Lakeland is coached by Colin Burton in his fifth year. He's 28 and 19. Concordia is coached by Greg Etten. He's in his 12th year and he's 53 and 62. Concordia did win last year, Chris, 17 to nothing. Yep. And uh, they are the owners of the Cheese Bowl for right now. It's an inside handoff. Nice tackle made for uh, Lakeland by uh, Bryce Boyer. Borer. Actually, you know what? There's two sixes. Shazan Crutcher on that tackle. Crutcher, one of the leading tacklers on the team. Fake handoff, Lynn Kipps keeps it, but uh, he's knocked down by a host of muskies and there's a fumble and Lakeland recovers again. Coming out of the pile with the ball, Chris, was again Number 59, McNemon Vincent. Vincent is from Vernon Hills, Illinois. He's a six foot, 221 pound junior. And uh, <laughs> quite a good start for wow. him. Wow. Not even two and a half minutes in the game. And uh, two turnovers by the Falcons. 
See if the fish can take advantage. Hand off to Rivers and uh, he gets thrown down at about the 25 yard line. Making that stop was Noah Switzer. Pick up of about three yards on that. Rivers getting closer to that 2,000 yards. He needs, I think it's 84, year, 84 yards. Oh no, just 25, just 25 he needed. So okay. he's really close. One hop, pass is incomplete. Intended for uh, Christian Chapman. Lakeland with the wind. But uh, when you have a kid like Rivers, uh, I still pound the ball. Whoopee. A little windy in the booth, too. <laughs> Our window's wide <laughs> open. That's okay. Handoff. Eddie was hit near the line. Was able to slip the first tackle, but uh, not the second. Making the stop for uh, the Falcons was Philip Johnston. Well, I'll tell you, Rivers... Did a nice job there. Oh, they're going for it on fourth down. On a sco scooter step there. Oh, he's wide open. Looking for an opening and uh, making a nice catch and run was Christian Chapman. Good pass by the uh, by Chartez Nunnery. Well, he was wide open. You could have delivered a little early. What a cushion there by the Falcons. Hand off to Rivers. He steps through one tackler and then is gang tackled inside the 10 yard line. He seems to have really good vision, Marty. You he know, does. You know, he kind of hesitates and looks and then reads. I was going to use the adjective shifty. It's kind of like what you are when you play cards on Wednesday. <laughs> Nunnery is hit and loses the ball, and we got a flag down on the field. Lakeland lost it. Coming up with it was uh, Noah Switzer. But let's see what this flag is all about. Well, he had Mason Prunick right across the middle, but did not deliver the ball. And, and then he got sacked. Good defense played that time by uh, Concordia. Lakeland with an excellent opportunity to go up two scores and they uh, turn it over. Now, I would have hit Prunig across the middle, but uh, he hesitated it, and when you hesitate, you're lost. Speaking oh, of hesitation. Speaking of hesitation is right. Getting sacked was uh, James Lynn. Lynn is a sophomore quarterback from uh, Chino Hills, California. Another one not used to this kind of weather. He's big and tall, five, well, he's 5'11", but he's big, 2'10". Pretty thick. He looks a lot stronger than 2'10". He's Again, well a built. spread formation by the Falcons, four wide receivers. Second and about 13, over the middle, he's got a receiver on a great pass and catch. Uh, Jarius Kelly making that grab. And it's a first down at the 45 yard line. I don't even have Kelly with a catch this year. But, you know, if I was in Concordia, I'd throw the ball, kind of skip this uh, running. I like what they're doing with their spread. Deshaun the Ford wind. is in the backfield with him. Yeah, I, they're. They're a little more pass oriented than they are run oriented. Well, yeah, they're going into the wind. Excuse me. 
Oh, Lynn on a nice spin to get out. Nobody here. Steps through one tackler. He's at the 50 and into Lakeland territory. Goes out at about the 41 yard line. Yeah, they're into the wind, excuse me. And we get a lot of little chipping there, a little talking. Referees step in and break that up. Well, we talked a little bit about it, Lakeland's defense and does give up a lot of yards. Yep. The turnovers bailed them out early. They need another one right now. Quick out and the tackle is made right away by Andrew Cardile. Still the four wide receivers, but now we got three on the right side. Lakeland blitzing. Concordia does a pretty good job of picking up the blitz and Lynn's long pass goes incomplete. Good coverage by Combs there. Blanketing the receiver. Jim Jared. Jared, number 94, comes off and coming in for Lakeland is uh, Jason Wide Wilder. Inside handoff to 40, slips one tackle, but not fumbles. the next, and he fumbles. I think the official called him down. And they did, Concordia will keep it, but it'll be fourth and a bunch. Fourth fumble already, three have been lost. Two by Concordia, one by the Fish. And fourth down, try to pin the Fish back. Lakeland has nobody back to receive the punt. Per Penn just put six inside the 20 this year, Marty. And this one into the wind is it not goes, going to get bad inside bounce. the 20. Bad bounce for Concordia, great for Lakeland. They're gonna call it down on the 27. And it'll be first and 10 Muskies. Carl Tez Nunnery is the quarterback. Larry Rivers in the backfield with him. Got a Sheboygan kid starting in the line. Austin Watts, number 76. He's way over on our side. You can see him. Big house. <laughs> He's a big guy. There he's blocking well. Nunnery going open. deep, wide open, making the catch for the Muskies and Going in for the touchdown. Making that grab was number 85, Jalen Rido. 6'6, 171. Man alive. Chris, where's the defense? Wow, nobody was over there. Rido. You talked about uh, Prunick being wide open over the middle on the previous. A uh, possession while Rido was even more open on that play. A lot of scratching heads over on the Concordia side with their turnovers and now laps on defense. That just can't happen. Collie's kick was good. There was a penalty on the play uh, Lakeland is going to wave it off. And uh, it's 14 to nothing with 6.50 left in the first quarter. 
Don't you get it on the uh, kickoff? We'll see. Uh, you have that sometimes. choice? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next time. Well, we heard and uh, spoke about, actually, uh, Larry Rivers and his rushing, but uh, so far it's been a good mix. Nunnery's passing and uh, Rivers with the good running. You know... <laughs> Rido is six six. You think you'd see him out there, don't you? <laughs> Can you miss that guy? Well, especially since they have the win, you know that Muskie's going to throw. You'd have probably a few more def defensive backs out there, but I guess you got a counter for Rivers, so I guess you forget to guard one guy, Jalen Rido. Yeah, not deep, taken at the 15-yard line by uh, Ford, and he slips right through. He's out to the 50 before he's knocked down. Nice return by number 34, Deshaun Ford. No huddle offense, Concordia right to the line. Lynn barks out the, uh, see, fakes the pass, it's a draw play. Making a nice run Fumble. and going for the first down, but fumbling the ball was Mon Matt Montgomery. Let's see who got it back. Lakeland, all right. Coming into the ball game, Matt Montgomery was the leading rusher for Concordia, but uh, he fumbled that one on his first carry of the game. Unbelievable. That was a big hit, though, Marty. Oh, that was, you're right. Rock'em, sock'em football is what that was. Fifth fumble of the game, and we're just into the second half of the first quarter. Four have been lost. And off to Rivers, he's looking to take it up the middle and does, picks up about three yards on that carry. It'll be second and seven. Nunnery looking, dancing. He uh, tucks it under and tries to run, and that'll be a no gainer. It'll be third and seven, and maybe give him a yard. But uh, good defense by the Falcons. Lakeland has had uh, good success throwing. Let's see if that continues. Continues. Hunter, he zips it out to his wide receiver. Making that catch was uh, Christian Chapman. I believe that's Chapman's third catch. First down. Rivers right up the middle and not much there. He gets hit right at the line of scrimmage. That's a little strange play. Austin Watts, 76, pulled to the opposite side, to the right side. But uh, you would think that he's going to kick something out, but it looked like Rivers decided to go up the middle, not following the block, therefore no game. Prunick in the slot right in front of you. Hand off to Rivers, and again, a nice stop. That tackle was made by uh, number 41. Let's see, where is his name? 
Dalton Lardoinus. Sets up third and long. Look for number one, Eddie, here. Eddie is split out second from the end on the yeah. right side. He's looking the other way, though. Hunterie passes caught by Rivers, puts his head down and drives forward to about the 30-yard line. It's going to be a first down Lakeland. Yeah, it looks like Rivers watched right here. He sees where the sticks are, knows he just has to lean forward to get the first down, and he did. That was Rivers' 13th catch of the season. Rivers on the carry, couldn't quite get the corner. Making a saving stop was Marquise Thorne. And he's hurt. And he's hurt. Almost looked like a trip. Thorne and Junior. Atlanta, Georgia. I was noticing Lakeland only had three seniors on offense and three on defense, but Concordia is even worse. They have two seniors on offense, no seniors on defense. But a one, one on defense. Very young squads. Yeah, you like to have, uh, you like to have that senior leadership. But uh, Lakeland gonna have a lot of guys back next year. Which bodes well. They do lose Des Eddy, and they lose, I think, the. Uh... Well, nice to see Thorne be able to trot off the field. Actually, you wanted to stay in. We were mentioned by Bill Wagner, did you hear that? Yeah, I almost fell out of my chair when I read Gosh. our names in the Lakeland it, preview last night. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty nice nifty. of them to do. Nunnery, it's got there it. There he is. El Eddie, Eddie spins, gets down right at the five yard line. Nice catch and run by Desmond Eddie. Look at those moves, spin right there and lunge forward. Concordia just given up 240 yards of offense this year on defense. And I'll tell you, Lakeland's going right through them so far here in the first quarter. Hand off to uh, Eddie, he drives forward and- uh, well, Rivers get, has gotta get in. They're uh, marking him just short. And the uh, Lakeland player is down. It's one of the big fellas. Could be senior Steve Reagan, possibly. Ball is spotted uh, just outside the uh, line to the end zone. You remember we were getting set up for the opening today and you're standing looking at the lines and, uh, and look at that, one yard and teams can't get it. Can't get it, yeah. Trotting off the field is uh, Steve Reagan. Chris thought that's who it was and uh, it is. Reagan is a six foot, 290 pound senior from Hobart, Indiana. Yeah, one of those three seniors on the uh, musky offense. Coming in his spot is number 65, Jose Cerros. See if Lakeland takes it up the middle with uh, Rivers. They fake oh. it. Oh, nunnery. Good fake to Rivers and he walks in untouched. Watch this, fake. Sucked that defensive end in, left the outside wide open. And you can thank there for sure, Larry Rivers, because that's of course the key that the 
Concordia Falcons were supposed to watch all week on film, so that was a great call. Collie's kick is no good. We've so had. So with 2.45 left in the first quarter, it's uh, 20 to nothing. Good start for a homecoming game, Chris. I was gonna say, we've had extra points, two penalties, and two missed extra points. <laughs> <laughs> a mixed bag. I was looking at uh, number 70 for Lakeland down in front of us, uh, Joseph Pegas, 6'5", 443 pounds. <laughs> Wow. I remember my freshman year at La Crosse. You were 445. No, <laughs> but I was thinking. You probably weren't 145. <laughs> before I could try out for the freshman basketball team, I had to run uh, seven laps around the track in 12 minutes. I don't think Jose can do it. Collie doing the kickoff chores. Another deep kick bounces in the end zone and out. Falcons will get it on the 25. This is their fifth time with the ball. The problem is They've been fumbling. They've still 245 in the first quarter. A lot of possessions. A lot of possessions, but when you turn it over all the time, doesn't help. No. It's hard to win. James Lynn still at the controls for Concordia. Handoff and Montgomery, oh, it's a fake handoff. Lynn still has it and gets knocked out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. Boy, that was a good fake. Good read, pulled it out. Lynn with a big gainer. It was such a good fake to Montgomery. He had two guys tackling him. Again, someone should be keying on the quarterback there. Good point. Got to have him covered up also. Lynn trying to find an opening. Guess he fumbles what? the ball again. And recovering for the Muskies is Jason Wilder. Oh my goodness. This could be a school record. Four fumble recoveries in the first quarter. Uh, it's not even I, raining. I know, can I make a change there, Chris? Andrew Cardell on the recovery, number 23. Andrew, Johnny on the spot. Concordia came into the game. They had fumbled uh, six times all year, losing twice. They fumbled the ball already five times, losing it four times. You know, it's not that cold. Well, it's early. You know, it's, your people aren't used to it. Gain of about five yards by Rivers, or Eddie, pardon me, Desmond Eddie on the carry. Eddie, the second leading rusher for the Muskies, 216 yards. He's already in the 2,000-yard club. Mason Prunick in the slot on the right side. 
Eddie slips through, picks up good yardage down inside the 40. First down. You know, Eddie wants to get yards ahead of uh, Rivers. He's ahead of him by about 100 yards, but the problem is Rivers has got another year, son. So, does Eddie? You're talking I, career yards. Yes, career yards, yeah. I hate to tell you, Des, he's going to catch you. <laughs> Eddie in motion. Nunnery's pass to Eddie is caught at, at about the 40, 38 yard line, and then he runs forward inside the 30 to about the 28. Maybe you can answer my question there, Marty. When he went in motion, why didn't anybody go with him? Why was there no Concordia guys over here? You know, it, it looked like a you know set up swing pass like that, but uh, nobody went with him and an easy pitch and catch. Oh, right through the hands of the intended receiver, Tehran Dags, not able to make that catch. Third and less than a yard for the first down. Ball spotted on the. 28. Fake handoff over the middle. Come all oh, right through the hands of Mason Prunick. He was in traffic, but it was a good delivery. Should have had that. I thought it was slightly behind behind him, but I agree that uh, should have caught it. A little interesting there on third and a foot. You just go and go for it, get the first down. Now you're forced to run on fourth down here. Only need a yard. Option. Nunnery keeps it. He slips through and gets the first down inside the 20. All this done with Rivers on the bench and Eddie. Good read by field. Nunnery on that option. They have five guys here. And with the win, they're going to attack. Prunick falls down. Catch is made that time by Mason Prunick. And he gets out of bounds inside the 10 at about the 8. For Mason, that was his uh, 13th, pardon me, his eighth catch of the season. Concordia going to call timeout. You may I ask, think Lakeland called that. Or Lakeland going to call timeout if you wonder why with the wind. Let's yep. take one more throw here. Maybe we can get two. 10 seconds left in the quarter. Lakeland on top, 20 to nothing. And uh, it's been the turnovers, Chris. Mentioned. Uh, Concordia's lost four or three? I am for four. Okay. But they fumbled uh, on the Five one times. drive where they punted. <laughs> this is only the second of uh, seven conference games. Uh, Lakeland and Concordia both lost the first. If they have any designs on winning the conference, they have to almost win out. Yeah, Lakeland fell behind, I believe, 31 to 13, going into the fourth. Rallied for a couple of scores, but just could not get that last one. And uh, Concordia suffered an overtime loss. Yeah, that was a tough one for them. Rivers back in the backfield now. Interesting. Yeah, handoff gets it down inside the five to about the two. And that's going to be the end of first quarter. With Lakeland on top, 20 to nothing.
if you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Boss Loki! Only you can prevent wildfires. I'm not your charity case. I am not your excuse to buy a new dress for the annual fundraiser. I am not the poster child for your big donation. I am out of debt and in my own home. I am off opioids. I'm graduating on time and on my way to a great job. I am. I am. We are. We are. We are. What it means to live united. Back at Taylor Field, Lakeland running a second and goal play. Option, Nunnery keeps it and gets drilled at about the two. Little or no gain there. It'll be third and goal. I think they're gonna go for it here. Two down territory. Oh, for sure. But uh, I'd feed the man. <laughs> I, I hear you there. Fake, and or Nunnery's in for his second touchdown of the game. Another nice fake to our Rivers, and Nunnery takes it in. Another injury on the play. I was Total. looking at the uh, first quarter stats, Chris. Uh, Lakeland had 206 yards of offense to only 71 for Concordia. What I said, what they they were giving up what 241 per game. They gave up almost 200. Now part of that's because of the short fields and stuff, but wow, and the long pass. Yeah, right, the long pass to Rido. Lakeland had uh, 53 yards rushing in 18 rushes. That's a uh, not a bad number for Concordia, but. Uh, the 153 passing is terrible. We didn't catch the number of the uh, Concordia player, but it looks serious. Oh, you got him. Isaiah Schultz. One yep. of those few seniors. Lake Station, Indiana. Native. Hey, guess who's in the ball game, Chris? Joseph Pegas, number 70. This would be their Lakeland's hippo formation. Of course, it's only an extra point, but. Why? Do I see a white shirt lined up on the... Yeah, that's Pegasus' T-shirt underneath his oh. jersey. <laughs> I'm like, why is there a Concordia guy on the other side? <laughs> that's the reason. And it's good. With that good extra point, Lakeland now on top, 27 to nothing. I thought this was going to be a better game. Chris. I did too. I'm just in shock. 17 to nothing last year. Concordia coming in uh, with a tough loss a week ago. You know, both teams pretty fairly even on stats. You know, who would have guessed it? Yeah, I was thinking uh, uh, an interesting storyline might be Concordia's good defense against the run and uh, Larry Rivers of Lakeland, but uh, it's uh, been the lack of pass defense by Concordia that's hurt them. Well, yeah, well, they already, yeah, both. Anything Lakeland wants to do, they had uh, first half, first quarter, they had almost uh, 
what, 70 yards on the ground. And <laughs> it's never going it? to get 10 yards. <laughs> Oops. <All right. laughs> what was that? Uh, onside kick, actually not a, you know, if the coaches up in the booth are watching on the kickoff returns, how that front line reacts, and an onside kick is not necessarily a bad plan. It's just you got to get the kick to go 10 yards. I don't think it's a good idea at all. You're up by 27. Why give them a short field and uh, hey, the wind? Be a Trumpster. Kick them uh, when they're down. <laughs> what you're doing is opening up for a rally. Mark that down. <laughs> that could come to haunt Lakeland. Maybe not next year. Maybe the year after. It just doesn't make any sense. Were you like that as a baseball coach? Remember never. from year to year to year? Oh, that I do. But I would never rub in a game. and That was sometimes probably my problem. I lost some games that way. What I liked about you is you never um, yelled at the umpires. <laughs> or was that just the base umpire? <laughs> <laughs> Deshaun Ford in the backfield with Lynn. Screen. Little screen pass to Ford. Gets a uh -oh. good block up front, and uh, he's knocked out of bounds at the 20. Oh, boy. Deshaun stepped up through a block on a rushing defender and then slipped out into the flat and was wide open. Lakeland rushing four. Lynn loses the ball again, and Lakeland has it. Oh, oh boy. Wow. That recovery was made by Washington Vivanco. Number 52. Unbelievable. It is. Lynn stepped out of the pocket, was gonna run, and then the ball just uh, was knocked out of his hands. Now, Marty, we've do, done a lot of games and seen a lot of great performances, but five fumble recoveries in the first half of a football game, that's gotta be a record, not for the, only for their school, for uh, but for us. Oh, for sure, I can't. Never, I never, mean, ever. even if you look at a full game, they have right. five lost fumbles. <laughs> is Rivers trying to get outside, couldn't do it. And then we get a flag coming in. Kendall Davis loses his helmet, but he's gonna have to sit out a play. Yeah, and I'm wondering if they're gonna let him stay in because the helmet was ripped off. And I believe that's what the penalty is about. Fifteen yard penalty. That's one thing that uh has been encouraging, Chris. We've had few penalties today. Well that was a doozy. Yeah. Just uh, another Falcon uh miscue. Yeah, jeez. Hand off to Rivers, tries to cut it back, spins through one tackle, and leans forward near the 40, but there is a flag in the area that would normally be holding on the offense. I think they're gonna get Davis there on the tackle. Same guy that got his helmet ripped off, decided to take a little aggression. <laughs> Payback? Whoever was in his way. 
Balls march back to the 27 yard line. It'll be uh, first in about 17 or 18. Yeah, it's, it's a spot foul. It's not like in the NFL where it's automatically 10 yards. Uh, you know what? This is gonna be three flags in a row. That's because you said something. Thank you. <laughs> One penalty in the first quarter. Murray says something and now there's times four. Yeah. Eddie in the slot on the left side, Prunick in the slot on the right side. Rido is the wide out right. Rivers in the backfield with uh, Nunnery. Now Rivers goes out into a wide receiver position. Nunnery flush from the pocket and there's another flag in the backfield. This time they're gonna get Sheboygan's Austin Watts. Nunnery gave the classic pose when he found out a flag was thrown. I don't understand why they weren't, you know, trying to run anyways. You're going into the wind, you have rivers. Yeah, maybe you can break a long one. There's only three down linemen. The rest of the defenders are uh, defensive backs or linebackers. But uh, again, making a good stop for the Falcons was uh, Caleb Carretta. Uh, pardon me, Connor Stomming. Richard Bartson running the top camera. Greg Zablocki on the field camera. Scott Malup and Eric Wiesman in the truck. And into a pack of uh, Falcons and coming away with the interception was Brandon Hargis. Not a good decision that time. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but six white shirts right there. And uh, Lakeland decides to throw it right into that group. Sometimes you just run and punt and take some time off. Play on. Nope. We're gonna try to throw one into a seam there, but uh, six white shirts in and around that area. First and 10 Concordia at the 40 yard line. Second turnover by the Muskies. Hand off to Montgomery, breaks it to the outside, but a good tackle made by Travion Smith to prevent a uh, big gainer. As it was a pickup of about four yards. You know, on the la last Lakeland series, I wouldn't mind like a screen or a yeah, swing pass. Right. Don't have to throw it downfield. One thing, run the clock a little bit. You're up by 27 and Montgomery again bouncing it out to the right side. He's got room and gets it down near the 20 before he's finally knocked out of bounds. Smith again. Trevon Smith from uh, Griffin, Georgia, Junior. Montgomery's got good quickness too, Chris. 
showed that the last two times. A little flip out to, to uh, Montgomery and he gets it uh, down inside the 10 before he's finally pushed back. Lucky not a roughing penalty there on the Muskies as they decide to give Lynn a little extra shot. Ezekiel Combs, one of the uh, Muskies on the stop. First and goal. Good read by Lynn. Finding Montgomery open in the flat. That was not a good play. Well, the receiver didn't go out like uh, Lynn thought he was going to. Well, he slipped and then Lynn just threw it into that area anyways. Good pressure though on the outside end by uh, Vincent to, uh, excuse me, that would be uh, Ben Van ben, ben Coe to uh, make Lynn get rid of it. Tanner Hill was the intended receiver. Oh, oh fumble boy. again. And Lynn is knocked down. He was able to get it back, but uh, got sacked just inside the 20. Wow. Two muskies on the stop Team that time. Vincent was one of the players in there. That was a mess. Totally. Now Concordia has had no luck throwing down the field. Let's see if the Muskies come at him. Lakeland has picked their spots when they've blissed and uh, it has thrown Lynn. And we get whistles all over the field. Timeout Concordia. There's 921 left in the Time first out. half. Lakeland on top 27 to nothing. Third and goal from the 17 yard line, Chris. What do you call? Well, you'd like to, obviously you gotta throw one in in the end zone, but uh, you know, Concordia has, hasn't really thrown down the field much. They've got some, some success on swing passes, but you don't wanna risk that because he may not get there. Let's see if they run something like towards the middle on a, on a post or something. Defensively, and I mentioned that uh, Lakeland has picked their spots for blitzing. Would you uh, apply I'd a little more house. pressure? <laughs> oh yeah, I bring them. Because uh, Lynn has been bothered all day and the offensive line, we said it'd be done in the trenches earlier and so far the fish on both ends have controlled that. They're only gonna rush three as of right now. McNemon Vincent, number 59, has applied a lot of pressure all day. Let's see if he yeah, uh, does if, the same. He's at right defensive end. Let's see if Smith comes too. Nope. Vincent ran right back, but pass Lynn. Pass over the middle is short. short. Incomplete. The receiver was there. Good Not pressure. enough pose. Wow. Disappointing if you're a Falcons fan. <coughs> Gonna go for the field goal. You have inside the 10 and you gotta settle for a field goal. Karshinsky's line drive kick is no good. <laughs> Lakeland will take over. A good defensive stop for the Muskies. Got to take the uh, wind out of the sails of the Falcons too, Chris. Got that right. Carl Tez Nunnery in the backfield at quarterback per usual. And uh, back there again is Larry Rivers. 
Hand off to Rivers. Taking it, it, it on the inside, doesn't get much. That's okay. Clock running under nine minutes in the first half. It's really worried about Concordia scoring there and then getting a quick score. Next thing it's a two score game. Defense stepped up. See if Lakeland can run some clock here to end this half. But uh, all of a sudden the run defense is stiffened. Davis out of there DiMazio is, on the stop, Chris. Yeah, one of them. yeah, yeah he comes out running. of there like he just won the state championship, <laughs> son. Look at the <laughs> scoreboard. Make a score on the other end first before you uh, get so excited. They've definitely shown the ability to stop the run, at least so far here in the second, in the first half, really. They did pretty good in that first quarter. Rivers pushed out of bounds. Not uh, nearly enough for the first down. That's okay. We got a punt here. See how far this one goes. If I was Concordia, I'd be lining up about the 50. When you look at that south end zone, Chris, in the top of the Uprights, it's uh, really blowing to the north. Yep, they're going to set up at about the 50. It's not going to get farther than that. Low line kick and a bad, bad bounce for Lakeland. It's going to go out of bounds at about the 37. Wow, what a bad kick that was. Well, you knew the wind would be a factor, and it was. Otis Watts missed it. Or Kyle Erickson, pardon me. My bad. Well, third consecutive trip inside the uh, Lakeland territory. They haven't scored the first two times. Let's see if we get another stop here. And now we got cheating. <laughs> Illegal procedure on uh, Concordia. Push them back five more yards. Sam Bartlett, number seven, is uh, up front for the Lakeland defense. Sam, a pretty big guy, but not like those uh, big Concordia linemen. Let's see if he can battle through. He does. Force Lynn back to the right. Tucks it under and runs. And uh, amazingly, Chris, he does not fumble. And he gained seven yards, which is even more amazing because uh, Lakeland had that play bottled up. Watch him go to the left here. Watch Bartlett, number seven. He was one of the guys over there, forcing him back the other way. Shows good quickness for the sophomore. Montgomery in the backfield with Lynn. He, a fake to him. Lynn keeps it and slides down. Good choice. Not a big gainer though. I don't know if that's what you want to be doing. Lynn Izzard has carried the ball the most of any of uh, the Falcon guys, but uh, not a lot of big gains. Got one 32 yarder this year. Tanner Hill is out here on the left side. He goes 6 2. He's a big guy. A lot bigger than that defensive back that's guarding him. And Montgomery. Takes the handoff. He's going to get it down near the 30, but that's short of the first down. And uh, Concordia down four scores. Going to go for it here on fourth and three. Fourth and two and a half.
Big handoff. Linz passes oh way off the mark. Hill was the intended receiver. He came in. On the defense was a Rashawn Brumfield. Lynn came into the game at 63% uh, of completions, but uh, hasn't looked sharp tonight. Or today, excuse me. We know what you mean. Boy, neither team uh, very long drives. No. Well, we mentioned that uh, near the end of the first quarter, how many possessions there were. Yeah. I mean, those were enough possessions for an entire half. Eddie had it go right through his hands. It looked to me like he was running with the ball before he uh, caught it. And I take him catching the ball 96 out of 100 times. That was the one he dropped. Yeah. One of four out of 100. Second and 10. Hand off to Rivers. There's a bit of an opening in the middle. He slips through one tackle and dives forward out to about the 38. It'll be third and two. Nice four minute and 30 second drive now with a score. Just about put this game away. Don't want to give Concordia any more chances. They've had three chances inside the 50 of Lakeland come out empty. Hand off to Rivers. He's through the middle. He's got an opening and he gets into uh, Concordia territory at about the 48 yard line. I think Ooh, another a good read there. here, Marty. Look at his read. Look at him scoot. Look for the hole. Sees. Look at his eyes. His eyes are always up the field. And here he comes again. He gets about two yards on that carry down to the uh, 45. And he says, <laughs> I need a somebody rest. else. Put Dez back there. Coming in the ball game was uh, Teron Daggs. Eddie will move to the backfield. Rogers hurt a little bit. Nunnery tucks the ball in and rolls down to the 40. Clock still running. Be third down and about eh, a short three. Now here's the situation, Chris. Uh, just, even if you don't get the first down, get it close because you're going to go for it on fourth down. This spot on the field. And uh, Eddie gets close. I don't think he has it. No. It's going to be fourth down and less than a yard. And there's no sense punting with the wind, like you said, and uh, two down, two down territory. You only need a half of a half of a yard. The only bad thing is they don't come up to center. They always snap it back five yards. Yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. Up the middle for Doesn't Eddie, matter. he's got the first down, and he's battling down to the 30, inside the 30, first and 10, Lakeland. Good hole there by the Muskie offense. Look at the push, big time push. <laughs> Almost lost the ball. Davis pushing, Fisher pushing. What I really liked about that run is he knew where he needed to get for the first down and he made sure of that first. I don't like this. Me either. Short pass there to Eddie, he makes the catch. Go forward and he steps out of bounds inside the 25. I went, I went empty your backfield here. I keep your backfield going. 208 left, nice moves. I, I've had enough of this, he says. <laughs> Watching Larry Rivers on the sideline. Little bruise on his foot. He's walking okay. I'll be ready for the second half, he says. 
Just don't hit me like that anymore. Fake to Eddie. Oh boy. Quick pass to Prunick, but he's hit immediately. Check that. It was not Prunick. It was Tehran Daggs that was, on the catch. That was dangerous. Throwing into the traffic like that. Could have been picked going the other way. Clock is rolling. That's good. 120 left in the first half. Got two timeouts in your back pocket. It's third and about six. Don't be afraid to run. Wow. Pass, that was a long pass. It was complete and it gets him a first down. Nice catch by uh, Christian Chatham, but uh, that ball was in the air a long time. I just don't understand the D-backs again with the cushion into the wind. I mean, you gotta count on your speed a little bit. That looked like an easy pick. Eddie bouncing it to the outside, has the corner and into the end zone. Touchdown, Lakeland. It is wow. officially a blowout. 44 seconds left. Eddie's showing good speed when he bounced it out to the left side. Ran in untouched. His second touchdown of the day. Whoops. Somebody on the uh, F-bomb. That kick is up and good. Polly on the kick. That makes it 34 to nothing with wow. uh, 44 seconds left. Never saw it coming. Never. You, me, you and me both. The thing is, like I said, Concordia had three chances down here in this quarter and they just got nowhere. They got sacked on one and fumbled on another and just I think nothing on the other one. I think that one possession, it was first and goal at the seven, and they turned it over back, I think it was outside the 20. It's gonna be a happy homecoming for the Muskies. And they're gonna get the cheese bowl back. Well, it's at halftime, the Concordia locker room is going to be a little bit different than the Lakeland. <laughs> I don't even if I was in Concordia, I'd even go in because I wouldn't want to hear all the celebrating by the Muskies. And I wouldn't want to listen to my coaching staff. There you go. What, five fumbles? There's no excuse for that. Five fumbles, multiple bad time penalties, and uh, missed field goal. Jaden Wilson holding the ball for Kali. Very short kick, fair catch. And dropping to the turf was uh, the receiver. Man, you finally get to touch the ball and you do that. Eli Wallace, freshman. That was a freshman play. That was Falcon a bad spot. Falcon it on the 36. <laughs> Watch, Chris. I said that was a bad spot. I thought he was up closer to the 43. You're right. <laughs> Quick out to Hill. Stiff arms and uh, lunges forward. Making the first hit was Ezekiel Combs. Deshaun forward in the backfield now. Deep pass and a lot of contact. Be interesting to see what the call is. Pass interference. So we'll be moving up 15 Rip, yards. Riportella 
was the intended receiver. It's just a hitch and go. And Lakeland decided to, you know, basically pull down the receiver. But there's only 16 seconds left for Concordia. They have two timeouts. They decide not to use one before. And uh, they're going to give it put the clock back to 20 seconds. But clock time is, is reset. Running out. They march mm -hmm. off 15 yards, and uh, Con Concordia's. Well, they got a chance, Chris. Clock's going to start on the, the safe snap. Yeah, the safeties are back near the 25 yard line. A lot of cushion. Lynn over the middle. It's incomplete. Someone was supposed to zig, and nobody zigged. So I that pass fluttered away. Yeah, Rippertello looked like the player closest. I think to he was supposed pass. to come in, and he just went straight down the field. There definitely was an opening in the middle. There was those four seconds that Lakeland had to put back on the clock after the penalty. Lynn looking, looking. Now he's going to run. Tick, and tick, he tick, spins tick, tick. down near the 36. And uh, that only took six seconds. There's 10 seconds left. Concordia calls a timeout. They have one left. With that uh, timeout remaining, Chris, that pretty much opens the whole field for the Falcons. I mean, they can throw it over to the middle and yep. still stop the clock for one more play. And I think the Muskies would be happy to trade a field goal for a touch, touchdown up by 34. Yeah, really. And the last effort by uh, Concordia with their kicker was not very good. It's a low line drive. It's like your hybrid on the golf course. <laughs> I wish. There's not trees close enough to where my golf ball goes. <laughs> A woody. Uh, coming. Lynn back. Oh, missing the sack. And Lynn hit out as he throws. Incomplete. Just missing the sack was Ezekiel Combs. Boy, he blitzed in there. Had a good shot at Lynn, but couldn't knock him down. Caught the tail end of that last play. What would have been more interesting was the hit on Lynn in the backfield by Combs. Should have been an offensive pass interference on this end. Two seconds left. Hale. Mary. Full of grace. He's going to roll out. Combs nope. come. Same play. Lynn throws it to the end zone. It's out of bounds. Incomplete. You got a Falcon player down. It looks like Tanner Hill, but he's getting up. He'll be fine. And that's the half. Lakeland on top, 34 to nothing. You're a busy man when you turn 18. But with all you've got going on, don't forget to register with Selective Service. It's the law. It only takes about two minutes to register at sss.gov. And you can do it without even looking up from your phone, just like that. When you turn 18, register at sss.gov. With Mother's Finances, I wish we had discussed this sooner. It's difficult making decisions for mom. With dad gone, a lot has changed. 
Seeing my parents age, I worry about their financial decisions. As we age, our ability to make good financial choices decreases. Start the conversation today and plan for the future. Financial resources and tools are available at smartaboutmoney.org, a non-commercial organization focused on your financial success. Spent all our money on the
And now for your enjoyment, we present a performance by the Lakeland University Cheer and Dance Team. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Beyonce Homecoming 2018. I'm Rudy Tempesta, I'm 92 years old. I fought in World War II, then I came home and worked for the post office for 70 years. 
I've been getting Meals on Wheels, and I enjoy it. The most important thing about Meals on Wheels is you meet the people, which to me is fantastic. You need people to keep your brain moving. That's what life is about. It's love and having a conversation with people. You got a key? Go fish! In your face, in your face, in your it only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. We're back at Taylor Field on the campus of Lakeland University where the Muskies lead 34 to nothing over Concordia, Wisconsin, the Falcons. Uh, Chris, as I look at the uh, halftime stats, the item that uh, stands out, and it's something we've talked about, is five four fumbles for Concordia, all of them lost. And uh, I wanted to mention who made the recoveries. Travion Smith, Car Andrew Cardell, uh, Mc McNemon Vincent had two recoveries, and then John Haggerty in Washington, Vic Viviano, Vivianco had uh, the other two. Uh, the other thing is Lakeland rushed for over 100 yards in that first half, and we had talked about Concordia's defense against the rush. Yeah, 283 yards of offense for Lakeland. Uh, that doesn't take a brain surgeon to figure out that you, you're looking at almost 550 for a game. That's outstanding. And, uh, 112 uh, on the ground when you mentioned Concordia only gave up about 98 on the ground for a game. Uh, anytime that Concordia sniffed a chance to score, they turned it over or were stopped by the Lakeland defense. And give Lakeland defense a little credit. They did a little popping out there to cause some of those turnovers. <laughs> Definitely. And some t TODs, turnovers on downs. Lakeland had uh, the ball six more minutes than Concordia in that first half and ran 18 more plays than they did. Uh, Nunnery had a good first half, hitting on 12 of 17 passes. Uh, the one mistake was the interception where he threw it into a crowd of Falcons. Uh, Lynn for the for Concordia was only five of 12, and you mentioned coming in, he was hitting on over 60% of his passes. Yeah. A lot of that had to do with the uh, pressure that it was that was applied. Well, Lakeland's gonna go into the win first here, uh, which is uh, a big advantage for Lakeland in the fourth quarter. I would look to see uh, Rivers and George do a lot of work here on the ground. I tried to shorten this game, give Concordia very or little time. Don't even give him a chance to even think about coming back into this one. Bryce Kenzie is back deep to receive this kick. Taken at the uh, seven yard line. Trying to get to the outside, can't do it. And he's gonna get hit at the 15. Oh boy. Good coverage by the Falcons. Lakeland will take it from there. Lakeland had 171 yards passing in the first half. Concordia only 61. He did have 76 yards rushing. Lynn led all rushers for them with 10 carries, 55 yards. Larry Rivers had 72 yards in uh, 17 carries. The yeah, other strange things with all the turnovers, Lakeland had eight possess possessions and a half. That's a lot. And here's the start you want by your workhorse, Larry Rivers. Going to get closer to 100 yards. That should put him at about 90. Actually, he had, uh, I read the, the sheet wrong, he had 69 net yards. He had 72, but he also lost three. 
So give him 79 and whatever he got on that play, which was about another 20. Fifteen, twenty-five, thirty-five, thirty. 25, 35, 30. That's about an 18-yard, 17-yard pickup. So he's got over 80, 69, 79. One 80. penalty in the first quarter, but uh, six penalties in the second quarter. Right away here, Lake Wigan's going to have a penalty. Rivers on another nice carry up to the 39. One thing I'm going to be watch to see if he gets to his average. We mentioned third and D3 with 148 yards per game. So he's he was right about at his average, and I just feed him all all this second half, just like that. Making the stop was Justin Dunlap. That was actually for a loss. It's going to be third and about four. Make it three. See what the Muskies do here. Desmond Denny coming towards us, number one. This is, again, they run all the time and there's only a minute and a half off the clock. Pitch out to Rivers, cuts it back inside, slips through a couple tackles and is downed at the 45. First and 10, Lakeland. Good effort there. Bad tackling. Rido's got to have a little block there too. He didn't help any. His defender went right, right past him, but River still got the first down. They don't take any time. It's looking at the uh, first half scoring too, Chris. The uh, last Lakeland touchdown was 11 plays for 70 yards. And he only took four minutes and 30 seconds off the clock. How is that even possible? Yeah. If they snap it within 15 seconds, Marty. You know, I get you play fast, but when you're up 34 to nothing, you want to. don't want to stretch the game. You want to. Or you want to make it go forever. You don't want to make it go so fast. I guess just yeah, the opposite. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Tehran Dags in the ball game and Eddie moves to the backfield. Eddie had six carries for 40 yards in the first half. Dags makes the catch, but he's going to get hit for a loss. Good defensive play out there by Mitchell Weatherall. No chance. Another one of those plays where the ball just seems to be in the air for too long. Eddie's got it, bounces to the outside, makes a nice run. Going to be third down. Again, now back into that two-town territory with the wind. You don't need to punt. Punting is pretty brutal going into that south wind. Third down and a long five. Oh, Fake. oh nunnery dropped and sacked. Outside the 45 yard line. Oh, you might as well punt. Yeah. Agree with you there. Part of that sack group was uh, Justin Dunlap. Erickson uh, not very successful on his one punt in the first half, only 14 yards. He's going to try and do a little better than that. Back deep is uh, Deshaun Ford. Good punt. Get away a bad from bounce. I think they're going to call it down right at the 30 yard line. Well, considering the wind. Not too bad. No. Nope. Better than the first one. 
If you watch if he punts in the fourth quarter, he bombs one 50 yards. <laughs> With the wind. Get that average back up there. Well, Concordia is basically in a situation they have to score every time they have the ball. Is that Lynn still at quarterback, Chris? Oh, yeah. Number 11? I was okay. wondering if you're going to make a change, too, but you look at their stats. Lynn has been out there for uh, all but two throws all season. Yeah, they're going to stick with him. Montgomery, their leading rusher, was in the backfield with Lynn. They faked to him, and then uh, Lynn kept it and stumbled for two yards. Tanner Hill is down here at the bottom of your screen. They got him listed as 6'2". I'll tell you, he looks taller than that. Yep. Fake handoff to Montgomery. Lynn keeps it, picks up a couple. He gets dropped at about the 35. Shazan Crutcher, one of the Muskies, helping to make that last stop. It's third down and four. Little press coverage down here on the bottom, Chris, on those wide receivers. Rayshon Brumfield, number five on Hill. Lynn keeps it. Struggles forward, but he's going to be just short. It's going to be fourth and about a yard. Oh, even closer than that. Less than a yard. He got a, I think he got in a very generous spot on that. Coming in is Tim Gerard, number 94. 270 pounds to push around. Once again, Oh, they're gonna go up on center, which is smart. Lynn. Got it. Not by much. No, and, and he did not look good on that carry, but no. uh, fell forward for the first down. Oh boy. Rippertello couldn't catch that ball a little off the money. Washington Vivanco in the middle of the line causing some pressure. Lynn has not looked good all day. Lakeland not comfortable bringing the, in the pocket and not throwing either. Lakeland bringing the blitz and uh, the little draw play to Montgomery didn't go anywhere. It's going to be third and about eight. Good pass there, Chris. That ball was caught by Nick Ruiz, but uh, he couldn't go anywhere with it. Lakeland doesn't mind that at all. Gonna set up another fourth down. No choice for the Falcons but to go. Fourth down and three. I'd play that press conference, conference coverage again because they're not gonna throw deep, they're just gonna try to get the first down. Blitz is coming. Concordia does a jo nice job of picking it up until now. Knocking down Lynn was Lakeland's Viv uh, Mac McNemon Vincent.
Good D. Yeah, very good. For a second there, I thought uh, Concordia picked up the blitzers pretty good, but then as uh, soon as Vincent, uh, pardon me, Lynn couldn't find a receiver, they were on him. Great field position for the Muskies, yeah. too. Falcons had no choice there. They've no, I agree go. with you. They lose by 50 or by 34. What's the difference? You got to go. Eddie on the carry. Takes it inside. Picks up about six. As I think back to that first half, the first quarter took a long time. Yep. Uh, this quarter moving right along. Rolling down to the six minute mark. Dags on the catch. Gets it up to about the 30 before he's pushed back. I know I said something about Rido before, but that time nice block out in front. Hargis, yeah. one of the defenders pushing Dags back. And again, they're short passes, keeping the clock rolling, moving the chains. Clock stopped because of the uh, first down, but now we're gonna roll it. Six minutes. Eddie avoids one tackler and then uh, bounces it outside. Turned a two or three yard loss into about a four yard gain. It's hard to tell who's got better footwork. Eddie or uh, Rivers. Yeah, good point. Looking for Rivers on the I side. I thought line. you were going to say uh, Desmond Eddie or Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> good job. Eddie Zagan and Zagan and gets inside the 20 for a first down. Little extracurricular, just yep. getting to know each other. I mean, nothing serious out there. Senior Steve, Steve Reagan struggling to get up, or is he? <laughs> <laughs> struggling to get off, get up by pushing off the other team. Eddie Oops. slips down, oh. and then we get a flag late. Something didn't look right there. This could be on Concordia. Don't be doing that. Jeez. Senior. Colin Burton wanted to know what was happening out there, questioning that call of the official. It was after the play, so it does remain first down, but Se it's second be down because second, they lose the okay. down. Yeah, second and 25, because it was after the play. That's why they lose the down. Seth foiled into the game, number 16, freshman. Charles Nunnery barking out the singers. Sing signals empty backfield now. Eddie Prunick over the middle. He's got it. Voids one tackler, pulls through another, and gets it inside the 20. That's uh, the second reception for uh, Mason Prunick. Former Red Wing. Yes, sir. We mentioned there were uh, three Sheboygan kids on the team. Dooley Scheffner uh, is the third, along with Prunick and uh, Watts. Watts. Austin Watts. Ooh, right the up freshman. the middle is uh, Josh Saffold, 5'9 freshman from uh, Glendale Nicolet High School. And I don't have him for any carries this year, so nice to get him and then a. Uh, Game. Right, yeah. Get them all involved. I think in that Badger game last week, they had 10 different, 10 different guys carry the ball. One of them was named Chris Wright. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <coughs> 
going to need a workload today from number 23 to beat those Sparties. Yes, he will. Game might be just underway. Here it's 34 nothing. Clipping down about four minutes left. Third quarter. Nice drive by the Muskies. Going forward on fourth. Down and out, and that's exactly what we were talking about before. Yeah. Yep. Good interception and return. That uh, interception was made by Brandon Hargis. Ball just hung up there too long. Uh, Prunick doing a good job of uh, catching Hargis before he took it to the house. We saw that coming in the first half. You know, you talked about the hang dime, Chris, and uh, playing to your speed as a D-back, and uh, Hargis did that. Pass incomplete. Intended receiver was uh, Jack Riportella. The second interception off a of nunnery. Montgomery gets thrown down. It's near the 50 yard line. Third down and about three or four. Here they come. Lakeland blitzing and Montgomery cannot get through. Good tackle made by number 94, Tim Gerard. You know, they went through that those holes and that was the right call, but you're right, a great play to stop that run. The hole was there, watch. But look at the effort. Nice job. Gerard there, like Marty said. A nice pass by Lynn, but uh, Hill not able to come up with it. And that's uh, fourth down. Concordia turns it over on downs again. Lakeland will have it in Concordia territory at the 49 yard line. Hill from Phoenix, Arizona. First game in the cold. On the 27th, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You're going on the 27th? Yeah, and you know what? What's It'll really a bummer there. is that their fall league baseball season where you have all these prospects and I would always go to a couple games. The season ends on the 26th. Missed the whole thing, but it'll be warmer. Well, we're gonna have a cold week, but you know it's gonna get a little bit nicer again. Yeah, Rivers on that carry picked up about about five. He's gotta be close to 100 yards. Desmond Eddy is uh, stacked behind uh, Ripa. Rido, pardon me. That would be the tall and short of it. Rido and Eddie. Right over the middle, Rido makes a nice sliding catch. Nice catch into the wind, nice low liner. No, no flutter on that one. So you got to do it against this win. Move the chains. Lakeland right up there. Hand off to Rivers. Dancing inside. Gets a good gain. Picks up about seven or eight yards. You're right about uh, Lakeland and the, the pace at which they play. You know, with this big lead and you want to run the clock. They're just right up and on the ball again. 
Yeah, they could run it another 20 seconds, but they don't. Rivers for a first down. First down. I think what we're seeing here, Chris, in terms of Lakeland's rushing offense is they're uh, wearing down yep. Concordia's front, front defenders. And when you're down 34 to nothing, you may not just have the same juice. Yeah, if you're exactly. On it's kind of like us. We don't have the same juice when it's 34 to nothing. Option play, pitch back to Rivers. Uh, Eddie, pardon me, and he gets it inside the 10. Only about a three yard pickup, but uh, nice run. Nunnery's a pretty smart player. He knows when he's gonna get hit. <laughs> he got out of the way Give there. it up. <laughs> and he retreated. Just a junior. Very young Lakeland squad. Another option. Eddie sidesteps one tackler Scores. and gets it right on the pylon. Touchdown, Muskies. Oh, what a run. Let's see that again. Watch this. Whoop. See you later. And he reaches out. Yeah, he looked like he was going down at the uh, 10 and uh, made the last 10 yards look easy. Well, you thought it was tough, but he made it uh, look easy. Third he, touchdown. You know what I think? Huh. I think he's got better feet than Beyonce. <laughs> Forty-one. Kick by Collie is good. We have 23 seconds left in the third quarter. It's been a quick third quarter. It'll be interesting to see what uh, Rivers yardage is. I would say about 100 and, I'll say 125 yards. That sounds pretty good. Watch this right here, a little shake and bake. See ya. But uh, Dad's Eddie is gonna be close to 100 right now. Yeah. He's had a nice third quarter. Great shot that time by uh, Greg Zablocki. That's called being at the right place at the right time. Richard Bartson giving you that shot. He's taking the win for the team. Yeah, he definitely has taken one for the team. And I'm not saying win, I'm saying wind. Oh. All right, let's get that kid out there holding the ball again. Here he comes. Is that Max Raminger? Here's the TD again. Nice replay. Eight, seven, six. Five, you know, four, two, he two, one. put it in his left hand and reached out to get to the pylon. That was impressive, too. Collie's kick holds up, taken at the 16. Oh, thought he was down, but he spun out of the yep. tackle and kept going. He's a big kid to, kid to return that. Except, no, that wasn't Brandon Johnson. Did you get the number of that guy? Yeah, it was. It said Johnson, yep. but here's what it says. 5'6", 145. No way. I know, that's why I was questioning. He looks bigger than that. I know, I agree. Lynn, oh, oh nice, nice tackle. Making the stop that time was Shazan Crutcher. And let's go to the other end. Ooh, and clock has stopped, what's up? We had uh, disagreements between oh. uh, Cousins, they were, were they meeting each other for the first time? No. Um, Exchanging pleasantries? Simeon, that should be the quarter.
Oh, why you do that, Combs? Oh. They were not kissing cousins on that play. <clears throat> well, and I'll tell you what, Concordia takes Simeon, who was one of the culprits out of the game. But uh, Lakeland keeps their guy in there. And that's not the end of the third quarter. We get yeah, to gonna, well, they did start the clock. Maybe they won't get the playoff in time just as it was running out. Montgomery right up the middle. He's got the first down. Good burst of speed on that play. And that will be the end of the quarter. Deshaun Ford on that last carry. But we're at the end of three quarters of play. Lakeland on top, 41 to nothing. The police called after midnight when they caught our son at a drinking party. It was a real wake up call. A policeman suggested we try Al Anon family groups. I didn't want to go to a meeting, but I'm glad I did. Are you troubled by someone else's drinking? You might be surprised at what you could learn in an Al Anon family group from people just like you. Call 1 888 4 Al Anon or go to alanon.org. Four out of five women with ovarian cancer will experience recurrence. It's often incurable. Until recently, following chemotherapy, women with recurrent ovarian cancer had to simply watch and wait for their disease to come back. Well, we say, not on my watch. Not on my watch. With maintenance therapies, women can delay recurrence. Awareness of your choices empowers you. Take an informed and active role. Visit notonmywatch.com. It's 209. We got the updated stats. Larry Rivers has 132 yards. There's another fumble. And Cordia gets it back. And then Lynn tries to, well, he does throw it, but it's incomplete. Saves a big loss. Uh, Lakeland in the ball game with 209 yards total and uh, rushing yards and 204 passing yards for 413 total yards. They've been uh, dynamite on offense today. Tough, tough day for the Falcons. Very. Lynn looking, fires a dart. I got a comment, for, I told uh, Colleen at the Concordia, who her daughter goes to school, that Concordia is losing 34 to nothing. She says, must not be a jerse on the Falcons team. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're all running cross country. Hey, man, on basketball, they're both basketball players, if you remember. Oh, no. oh boy. Lynn makes a nice catch of a bad snap and then gets sacked. If I was a Falcon, I don't think I'd report to practice on Monday. Might have the sniffles. Uh, they have a lot to work on. Yeah, Jonathan Haggerty uh, on that now part of that trip. They're young stop. too, but they have not come to play today. Fourth and a bunch. Eddie back. I would not have Rivers or Eddie in a game after this punt. Ooh. Oh, his knee will. Ooh, yeah, it looked close. like it was close. That's not Eddie back there. Good. No, it wasn't. That was uh, Chris Bustamante. See, I would, I would not have uh, Eddie or Rivers carry the pumpkin anymore. By the way, Des Edmund. Desmond Eddy has uh, 79 yards, Chris, two touchdowns. So not quite 100 yet. He is gonna be in the backfield though. <laughs> oh no. I just don't. Uh, I know what you mean. It's a long season. 
anything can happen. Eddie trying to bounce it to the outside and a pretty good piece of defense played by number 40, Connor Stomming. Look at number 40. He's right there, pushing him back, pushing him. Gets back in there and doesn't let go. No. Muskie's just manhandling him, both ends. Up front, in the trenches, which we said it would, might be the difference. It's part of the difference, but uh, turnovers didn't help. But still, as Marty mentioned, 400 yards of offense for Lakeland through three quarters is pretty good. Devin Shibliski is uh, the Concordia player who's down. He also made the stop on the play. I think we mentioned this earlier, but uh, we'll mention it again. Next week, Lakeland travels to Rockford, Illinois. Concordia will be at home against Aurora. Ugh. Those are both one o'clock games. Aurora's good. They are. They are? <laughs> they're, they're the team kind of to beat. They're uh, three and one overall, one and zero oh in conference. The other winners were Concordia, Chicago, Benedictine, and Wisconsin Lutheran. Wisconsin Lutheran, that was their first win of the season. They were one zero oh and three coming into last week. After this ball game, one, two, three, four, five games left for the Muskies. It's third and short. Good play. Option play. Eddie gets the sideline and gets the first down and is pushed out of bounds. Hits him close to honor. Yeah. Nice play by Nunnery. Bad defense by the Falcons. What's that? Ooh, good block on the corner. Yeah. I was gonna say, good good decision by uh, Charltez Nunnery to pitch it, but then the, the defense wasn't very good. No, one should be on the back, and one should be on the cornerback, and that should be, that's basically football. Des Eddie's going to get it to 100 yards, Chris, if he's not there already. Get him out. You're done. He's done. You should sit down. Uh, back in the ball game is uh, Josh Saffold. He had one carry in the uh, last quarter for five yards. Oh. Big ball almost tipped. Caught by Daggs, he eludes one tackler and uh, is going to get the first down at the 30. Nope, I think he's going to be just short. Just short. Don't like the play call, though. Oh, risky. Yeah, man, when you're up 41 and up. Uh, you know who got a bad spot? Me. <laughs> it's second and less than a yard. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at it. Send somebody up here. <laughs> See, what's he yelling about? It's 41 to nothing. The last thing you want to do is discuss things with the official. Oh, well, can't please everybody. You think they're gonna change the call, coach? Tough day for the Falcons. Very. Some well, poor tackling, some poor uh, coverage on pass defense. Well, we haven't mentioned it enough. 
uh, today. But again, Lakeland College does, Lakeland University does a wonderful job out here. They've really changed the housing, the field here now for the last three years. And, you know, they're constantly improving this campus and uh, welcoming people back and events. And it's really changed since we first started coming out here. Oh, Marty. big time. Big time. It's uh, so much nicer. Saffold on to carry, barrels forward near the 25. And that's a first down. Remember being out here for the first football game, it was actually, I believe, a KLC game that was played out here. That's right, that was that Friday night game. Because they got, it was water or something, or they're working on the field and Kohler and Saffold again on a big carry. Well, the front line for Lakeland on this particular drive, and mostly for the entire game for that matter, is just uh, opening up gaping holes for the running backs. Yeah, they're big up front and pushing them around. 100% right there, Marty. Saffold again, man. There was an opening there, Chris, you and I could have ran through it. Right, but he's got to attack that as you can tell, freshman is still a little tentative. Ah, good he's point. He's gonna be, those holes close a lot faster and you're right, they created a big one there. Get there, yeah, you know, you'll good, learn. Good job on that analysis. Prunick is the H-back uh, on the left side. Saffold again. I do like the way he goes and just puts his head down right into those big guys, though. So. Yeah. He's a little bigger than uh, Rivers and Eddie. Saffold goes 5'9", 165. He looks bigger. Rivers is 5'10", 175. Eddie, 5'8", 152. Good, good block on the corner. <laughs> it earned it earned a, f a flag. Oh, and Christian Staffel Chapman, I thought smashed. had a good block, but apparently he was uh, holding. And uh, Saffold's like, oh, this is how they hit at this level. Watch this. Holding. Boom. <laughs> Ouch. See ya. Yep. I see the. Uh, Look at the uh, graphics, Chris. Yeah. Flag. That's what Saffold Sue saw, too, as he looked down and saw a yellow from the sideline. Uh, look good from up here. Hey, at least he hit somebody. Yeah, second and goal, ball is spotted at the 16 yard line. Saffold bouncing it to the outside. Trying. And he gets spun out inside the 10. And I don't think he's getting up this time. Yeah, he was put down pretty hard. And uh, Chris is right, he's not getting up. Here you get to see it again. Looks like the play was designed to go inside, but uh, he bounced it to the outside. Good block on the corner. And then he gets thrown out. I think that was Devani Hamill, number 32, or Mylan Mosley, Mosley, number 32. Made I think that, a little uh, bit tackle. had to do with the last one, too. 
he got that back to back times. He got right. hit, he got hit pretty, pretty well. good. And you don't want to see this. No. The way he uh, fell down, I thought was good in terms of rolling. Right. You know, it wasn't like he was spiked into the turf. No. Nope. But uh, he's down. Yeah, he's got this may be our uh, only broadcast of the football season, Chris. I'm going to give a shout out and a thank you to uh, Dave Gallianetti and Lakeland University for uh, sponsoring us, being able to come out here and uh, do the broadcast. Uh, we'll and the be crew to get together. We and the crew to everybody. get together, yeah. Greg and Richard, they're. Maybe their only game of the season, too. Uh, Ball is spotted oh, things at get the 16-yard line. We're working on the basketball season. We don't know what will happen there yet, but we're trying to get a... We've got a schedule. We're trying to get funds, sponsorship for that. We'll just have to see what happens. Did you come to uh, Lakeland games when you were younger? Not football games so much. Where did, did they play here? Did they yes, play remember? Remember when we did that game where they tore up the field yep. so bad they had to play the rest of the at home North, games yeah. at North? Well, back then, you know, that's how it was when I was in high school. and uh, Lakeland played at North? Or no, they played, they played out They've here. They've always played here? Uh... I don't know. No, you know where they used to play a lot of their games? At Howard's Grove. Okay. That was probably their main hoe. Oh, he, he's up and walking. Good job. Josh Saffold. Hopefully he'll be okay. Uh, went to a number of uh, Lakeland basketball games because those were played in the armory. That was always exciting. And then their baseball games, I think they played a lot of those at uh, Howard's Grove also. Oh boy. Illegal procedure. Another new back in there, Marty. It's our returner. I see that. Max oh, Reminger. No, Chris Buster. Bustamante, El Paso, Texas. Two number threes on the squad, that's why eight right there. The other number three, Max Reminger, is a defensive back from Keele, Wisconsin. Yeah, just up the road. They're having a great high school season. <laughs> They've made the playoffs. Chilton yeah. from you know that their same league is. is? I remember reading. Waller, who used to be at North. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's at Keel now. Oh, really? Ooh. We had to get him out of the ball game so he doesn't get hurt. Yep. Nunnery sacked outside the 20. Yep. He's got a, got up slowly. Not a good thing. Fourth down. I'm gonna try a long field goal here, about 49 yards, 39 yards, excuse me. With the wind, Collie's got a chance. Line drive is through. Kali, wow, that was a dandy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he's a happy young man. Look Watch this. this. Maybe. Press play. Not a good snap either. No. Oh. That was a good angle. Yeah, that was a great uh, nice angle. Nice colors right. there, nice cameras. WSCS got some nice stuff. They do. 
7.52 left in the ball game. Lakeland on top, all the way. It's been all Lakeland, all day, all afternoon, all night, and into tomorrow. There we got it. 14-0 Badgers. Sweet. Cephas with a TD, says Johnny V. Where's Johnny V? The work zone. Elks? No. <laughs> I think it's on Indiana. The work zone, I've never heard of that. Me either. Never been there. He's not doing Poor Richards anymore? Oh, yeah. yeah there you go. I think I was there yesterday. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bad sign, Chris. <laughs> There's that kick into the end zone yeah. with the win. We saw that a lot in the first half. And with 7.52 left, here comes Concordia. Let's see if they switch up their quarterbacks. Get some other people in there. Number seven is trotting out there, Algerius Kelly, but he's a wide receiver. Uh, Lynn, well, number, number 11, 12. is still out there, it looks like. Might be wrong. And there's new defenders here. Good deal for Lakeland. Don't get anybody Hand hurt. Off. Taken down was uh, Brandon Johnson. I'll tell you, he looks a lot bigger than 5'6", 145. Second group in here, which is You're awesome. right, it is number 12 at quarterback, Christian Dufresne. Clock running, 7.20 left. Johnson jitterbugging through the pile. Gets knocked down at the 30. Number three team in the country lost today, Marty. Georgia at home to South Carolina. They're 24 Ooh. point favorites oh. and they lost. Wow. I know. Hoping that happened. Yep. They were saying on uh, game day this morning that this particular week, more ranked teams are playing, this, playing each other today than at any other point of the season so far. So they expect a lot of movement in the well, polls. They were supposed to beat South Carolina by 24. They don't even win at home. Terrible. Another Little sidearm throw, but it's incomplete. You look at number 28's legs, Chris, they're really skinny. Maybe uh, he is that 145 pounder. And a punt. I think this is on the second punt for uh, Concordia. To and that's not going to help his average either, putting no. into the wind. Do I have to punt? Send the second stringer in. Ruining my average. Yeah. Bustamante back. He's too deep. He's too deep. You make a running one-handed yep. catch. He's too deep. Ooh, pretty good kick, though, for against the wind and out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. 42. Uh, he, he nailed it. Nice job, Chris. Let's see who. Uh, Nunnery is not in the middle of the pile, Chris, as they meet down at the bottom of your screen to see who's going to come out. Play quarterback. Jaden Wilson is uh, played the second most, but it's gonna be uh, Logan O'Neill at quarterback. And alongside of him will be Elmanzio Evans, freshman from Madison. O'Neill's from uh, Spokane, Washington. He's a senior. He's uh, hitched up. Got a brace on his left knee. You don't, li don't like to see that. Uh, 
we will, as we have so far here in the second half, see a heavy dose of run the ball. And they're running clock to good decisions and not to put to play until later. And a pass, nice. Catch is made by Christian Chapman. Let him throw one. I don't mind that. Okay, if you want to. Yeah. That was Chapman's fourth catch. Now he can run it again. Let the senior throw one. Good point. Illegal procedure on uh, the Muskies. I'll be willing to bet. Jalen Glass in, freshman from Indiana, number 15. Quick out, boom. We're trying to steal it away from him, but uh, Bustamante won't give it up. I don't think it'll be too long before college two, you'll have uh, watched this replay. Boop. <laughs> the uh, signals will go into the quarterback's ears oh, too. Oh, right. I don't think that's too far away. I don't think it's that tough for technology anymore. Maybe for you and I, trying to figure it out with phones right. and Maybe Twitter it's a good thing we can't hear Scott in the truck. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like Bustamante picked it off the grass, but uh, officials say it was complete. If it's incomplete, it stops the clock. Oh, I hope this is one of the regulars here. Regardless, we don't want to see anybody hurt. Yeah. Whoop. Shoulder. Uh-oh. Is that Davis? I hope not. Looking through and uh, his number is not showing up with the rest of the group. Well, I'm just saying that I'm looking. He should be on the sideline. Why do you have your starting right tackle in the game? Kendall Davis oh, getting up slow. No. He's going to be okay. Like he will be at the arm. dance tonight, Chris. Trust me. Yeah, but it's shoulder. Oh, we just missed. The referee was right in camera shot to see if he had picked it up off the, off the grass or not. Clock running, 4-10. First and 10 Muskies. Uh, there's still 14, 13. Bustamante taking a big hit there. And a timeout. Don't flag. Oh, that, see that now. Holding. Number 60. Hit the freshman there. Renteria holding. In Texas. Don't want, to, don't want to do that. Let the clock run. Quick in, catches uh, not made by Matt Lemmer. He had it. Yeah. And then he dropped it. He's from St. Francis near Milwaukee.
Here's a play yeah, way longer couldn't, ago. Couldn't quite tell oh, where Davis got hurt. Yeah, but you look at that pass. Well, we've passed the fact. Another flag. Boy. Not a good ending. Almanzio Evans on the carry again. They're marching backwards, Chris. It's not supposed to be like that. Just talked about Jalen Glass. Now he goes and commits a penalty. Jeez. Second down and 26. Oh, catch, but the receiver is down. Lemmer on the catch, not much of a gain. Give him 40 yards. It's gonna be third and 22. I think they're gonna give it to Evans here. 25. Well, still sitting on the bench, Chris, is Josh Saffold, number 16. Nope. Hopefully he's gonna be okay. Oh Another whistle. again back-to-back -back penalties how do you explain that I mean what do you say to the kid he's telling Prunick get over here you're getting in the game if he has one more penalty well, two isn't enough no well I'm just saying Mason's like don't put me in again coach <laughs> Unless you throw the ball at me. Good decisions. Decision. Who fumbles? Until he fumbles. Oh boy. They'll have something to talk about on Monday. Uh, this is not a good ending to what was a very good game for the Muskies. Jalen Glass goes way to the far side of the field, <laughs> away from the coaches. <laughs> I'm not here. Uh, yes. DJ Tomlinson is in. Also in the ball game is uh, Seema J. Stokes up front. Oh, busting through the middle is Johnson, and then he gets smacked. The only last thing to finish is can Lakeland. AJ Harris on the stop, Chris. Keep the uh, shutout from a year ago, which was put on them. Yeah, there's something to uh, keep the point Falcons towards. Out of the uh, end zone. We mentioned it, but uh, Christian Dufresne, number 12, is in the ball game at quarterback. Side hand off Johnson bouncing it to the outside and uh, goes out of bounds at about the 41. Dufresne on the season was one for two coming in. Minute and a half. Close to the first down. Yeah, Johnson gets it out of bounds to save time. Mm -hmm. 
Third and one. Clock has stopped. There's 15 seconds left on the play clock. Plenty of time. First down. And Johnson struggling forward to the 35. Donovan Parker in. Devarius Davidson also in for Lakeland. Johnson trying to outrun speed. the defense, yeah. Only picks up a yard, however. Getting up off the bottom of the pile, helping to make the tackle was uh, Jason Allen. 50 seconds. Johnson again. Uh -oh. Right up the middle, wide open, and gets it inside the 20. Well, you know Lakeland wants the pitch to shoot out here. Shut out. It's 35 say, seconds. Shout, shoot out? He said yeah, shoot out. Shut but out. that's okay. Johnson again. Yes. He's dropped in the backfield. Making that stop for Lakeland was Isaac Gomez. There you go. That freshman might just from, preserve it. Yeah, freshman from Texas, San Antonio. Boom. Yeah, good replay. Uh-oh. 10 seconds left. Game's over, Marty. What happened? Procedure. What? I think they can take a timeout, maybe? Preser preserve the time? Yep. The clock would have ran out, but the uh, offending team has the option to uh, preserve time. But they still have to take, take a time five out. yards back. One thing at a time. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I don't want them getting away with anything, Marty. Me either. If we're gonna be here, let's play by That's the rules. Right. And if they shut out, shut us out last year, let's shut them out this year. You know what I think would be fun? In a blowout like this, you can only play your defensive players on offense, and the other team can only play their offensive players on defense. And then we'll see what happens. See how many holding calls there are. Over the middle, ball is tipped and incomplete. Five seconds left. Cool. Last play coming up here. Frayne takes a snap and drops back. So look, he's going uh -oh. to the end zone. Nice Knocked away, play. good defensive play out there. Jason Wilder, number 21. And he's excited. And that's the ball game. Lakeland takes it 40, 44 to nothing and uh, evens their conference record to uh, one and one. It's, uh, they will be at Rockford next week in what'll be a tough game. Uh, we wish them good luck through the rest of the season. And again, thank you to Lakeland for sponsoring this broadcast. And uh, hopefully we'll see you down the road.